What's the spiciest thing you have on the menu? That one. Okay. All right. Thank you. Oh, that's hot. Chili fruits sure have become one of the most important additions to much of the food down here in Southeast Asia. And in a way, it's really interesting that it has become so popular because that burning sensation we get from eating chili is essentially the plant's way of chemically preventing other animals from eating it. And the chemical that has made this plant world famous is called capsaicin. Think of the capsaicin molecule as a molecular key. And this key goes to a specific door or receptor on the cell surface. But capsaicin is not what primarily makes this receptor open. Heat is. So when the receptor registers heat, or when the capsaicin molecule binds to it, the door opens. When the receptor is activated by capsaicin, it opens. Heat receptor activated. Letting positively charged ions flow into the cell. This causes an ion channel next to it to open. And these are the first steps of a nerve signal. And the message this receptor tells our brain is that something really hot has bound to it. And the brain responds by raising our heart rate, increasing our sweating, and releasing endorphins in our bodies. Endorphins are neurotransmitters that work as natural painkillers and feel-good molecules. And a dose of chili will trigger the release of endorphins, and the heat will give us a somewhat painful feeling of well-being. Capsaicin's involvement in how we feel heat and pain has also shown to have medicinal uses. For example, as a main component in dermal patches used to relieve pain caused by nerve damage, or creams used to temporarily reduce muscle and joint pains associated with, for example, arthritis. A question that you might ask is, what should you do if you've eaten a little bit too much chili? Well, you should not drink water. The molecular structure of capsaicin makes it hard to dissolve in water. So drinking water will not wash the capsaicin molecule off our taste buds very effectively. But if we instead drink something with fats, like a milk drink, the capsaicin can dissolve more easily and get washed away. We're back to the question why the chili plant produces these chemicals in the first place if they cause such a burning sensation that no animals want to eat them. I mean, many plants produce sweet fruits in order to attract animals to help them spread the seeds. It turns out that the receptors that make us and other mammals feel that burn is not present in birds. And birds are definitely good seed dispersers, so by repelling other animals but not birds, chilies get an effective seed dispersal. In fact, some bird food producers even mix in some capsaicin in the bird food to keep mammals such as squirrels from eating the food. And there are actually some other plants that produce molecules that bind to the same heat receptor as capsaicin does. Can you think which ones these might be? All right, this was the chemistry of capsaicin and chili fruit. And now I'm gonna enjoy my meal. If you like what we're doing here at Team Science, subscribe to our channel for new videos every week. And if you have a cool project that you think we could collaborate on, send us an email.